Okay, our application is looking good, uh, but we need to do a last few set of steps in order to get a consolidated output. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is get a user instance, which consists of the user object and the repos object within it. Right now I'm making these two calls separately. So there's a get user info, which is a separate call. There's a get repos, which is another call. So I'd like to consolidate the two and have one object. And in order to do this, I'm gonna have to make this in the callback of the first API response. So we're gonna get into kind of what's called callback hell. You have a callback inside a callback, but uh, that's you know inevitable in this case. You're gonna have to deal with it. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why you've got patterns like promises and observables to deal with asynchronous uh, calls. But this is a small program. We can deal with callback hell uh, or whatever that is for now. So here's what we're gonna do. Now this line at line seven, you have the user object ready, right? It creates the user object and has it populated over here. Now, inside this, I'm gonna make the call to get repos and then get the repo and then populate the repo from the user uh, into the user. So I'm gonna move this inside of this callback and uh, let's get rid of the console.log over here. And uh, inside this is where we have the user and the repos. So I'm gonna say user dot repos equals repos. And then here I'm gonna do a console dot log of user, All right? So here's what I'm doing. I'm making the first call to get user info and now I have the user object. I'm not printing anything yet. I'm gonna make a subsequent call to get repos and then I'll have the repos and the user. So in the user object, I'm gonna populate the repos property with the repos output that the second call returns. And then I'm printing something to the console, right? This is not fully there yet, but uh, this is a start. So let's do npm start so that we can verify that we have a single user object with the repo is populated, all right? So this is looking good. Now, what we wanna do is limit the repos. We don't wanna populate the whole thing. Like we said, we wanna populate like the top four or five repos. So there are a couple of things we need to do. First, sort the repositories by fork count, the number of forks that have happened and sort it in descending order. And secondly, just pick like the top five uh, repos in that and then ignore the rest. And this is where we're gonna get the help of Lodash, right? Lodash has these uh, APIs to sort arrays with objects. It has APIs to pick the top five and all that stuff. So I'm gonna import Lodash over here. Import star has, I'm gonna use underscore from Lodash. And here I'm gonna make, a, make use of a couple of uh, APIs of Lodash. Uh, there is one API which lets you sort uh, an array of objects based on a certain property and based on uh, a sorting function. And uh, secondly, there is a, there is a function to, uh, there's an API to pick certain elements. So if you don't know what these APIs are, the best way to find out is by looking at the Lodash documentation. All right, so here we have the Lodash documentation page. It's lodash.com and uh, there should be a link for the docs and it's gonna lead you over here. We have a whole lot of APIs that are available over here. Uh, I happen to know what those APIs are, but you can, of, you can of course, uh, you know, browse through these and uh, and pick the ones that you want. Uh, I'm gonna pick this thing called sort by. Sort by takes in a collection, and it takes in the function that lets you choose the iteration order. Here's an example. We have a an array of users, right? It has user property and an age property, and you wanna sort by age. What you do is pass in an array as a second argument, and the array is gonna have a function which lets you choose what is it that you want to sort by. So here, what I'm gonna do is use that function and sort the repos by the number of forks. So I'm gonna do a let sorted repos equals underscore dot sort by and uh, I'm gonna sort the repos array and uh, the second argument is is a function which 
takes in the object and returns the field of that object. So I'm going to take in the repo object and I'm going to return repo dot. So this is a repo and I'm going to return repo dot fork count. All right. And I'm going to assign user.repos is the sorted repos. So what happens now is if you run this, and you look at the order, it's basically sorting in ascending order. You see this? The number of repos, number of forks are one at the beginning, and then as you scroll down, the number of forks increases. So it's sorting in ascending order, but that's not what we want. We want it to start in descending order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this with minus one. So I change the uh, the sign. So if it starts, it's going to be in descending order. Run this and there you go. We have it started in descending order with the topmost fork. Uh, count at the very top. So this is good. The last thing that's left is to pick the top five. We don't want to assign the whole thing. So this is a sorted repo. I don't want to assign the whole thing to user dot repos. I want to pick the top five. So again, I'm going to take the help of a lodash function where there should be something called take. Yeah, here it is. So there is a take API which takes in an array and the count, the number of elements you need from that array. And it's gonna pick those many elements from that array starting from the beginning. So I'm gonna use the take API and just get the first five elements. All right, so uh, let filtered repos is underscore dot take sorted repos. And then the first five elements and I'm gonna to assign to repos the filtered repos. And let's run this. And there you go. You get five repos over here and uh, those have been sorted in descending order. One last thing that needs to be done is, let me add the missing semicolon here. One last thing that needs to be done is to take this out and make it a command line argument. Right now I'm hard coding this this value right here. Uh, that's not good. We want to be able to pass, then, uh, pass that in as a, as a command line argument. The way to do this is by using this uh, process.argv as a way of getting command line arguments from uh, in a Node.js program. So I'm going to say let username equals process start argue oh, actually let me print this out so that get to know what this is this should ideally be an array so we do console.log of process dot argue and uh, I'm gonna run this and I should get uh, the output over here so these are the uh, command line arguments, but however, if I were to pass a command line argument here, npm start, and then the name of the ID that I want to pull up, and uh, I look at the command line arguments here. So you see the third item is the ID that I need. So here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do if process.arg v dot length is less than three i'm going to output please pass the username as as an argument else going to get that third item in the array and uh, instead of using the hard-coded username I'm going to 
pass in username. All right, let's format this. And now, if I do npm start without the argument, I should get a, an error message. But if I use the argument, I should get my uh, repository count. And I can use another username here. And it's going to get that user's information and uh, the repositories. All right. So this is what we've got. Uh, again, this is not fully done yet. There are ways you can handle errors better, like if the username doesn't exist, uh, errors during the REST API call and all that stuff. But I hope this kind of gives you an idea about how to build an application using TypeScript. Uh, this was a command line Node.js application. But in order to build a DOM application that's used by the browser, you would have a similar process. Uh, in the case of uh, a DOM application, what you would do is probably create one bundled JavaScript file. So you have one file that's being referred by the HTML. And uh, in this case, of course, it really doesn't matter. You are using Node.js to run it. So as long as it goes out into the, uh, the out directory like we have over here, it should be good. So this was uh, implementing some of the concepts we've learned in this course. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna check this in to a GitHub repository and I'll make the link available in the video description and also in the course page.